Welcome back to the channel. Glad you could join me. Um, today we're talking about Maryland, the old line state. Um, okay, so first of all, Maryland is called Maryland because it was named after Queen Henrietta Maria, who was the wife of King Charles I. So the colony was established in 1632, um, and uh, they wanted to call it Crescentia or Maria Tere after the Queen, but they eventually called it Maryland instead. Um, so it's Mary to reference the Queen and land. It was land granted by royal charter, so there you go. Um, it was one of the original 13 colonies of the United States, and one of the reasons it's called the Old Line State is because of the Revolutionary War. So during um, <clears throat> the Revolutionary War, at the Battle of Long Island, it was August 1776, they had the Maryland Line. It was the soldiers from, primarily from Maryland, uh, and they were defending a, a, a crucial position against the British forces. Um, they uh, were enduring massive casualties at the time, and George Washington said, Good God, or uh, he was reported to have exclaimed, Good God, what brave fellows I must lose this day. So then um, old line refers to them being uh, veteran soldiers, or old refers to them being veteran soldiers, and line is that position in battle. So uh, it eventually came, became the old line state because they were uh, trying to honor uh, those who sacrificed themselves at that particular time in battle. There you go. Uh, <clears throat> as I said before, it was one of the... Uh, original 13 colonies. Statehood was granted April 28th, 1788, making it the seventh state to join the Union. Uh, the capital is Annapolis. Um, it has a population of 6.1 million. It's a very small state. It's the 42nd uh, uh, largest state, as you can see from the slide there. But it has 6.1 6 million people, make it, making it the 18th most populous state. So there's a lot of people crammed into that small space. Uh, in area, it's uh, 12,407 square miles, 32,133 kilometers squared. And the largest cities, Baltimore, Columbia, Germantown, Silver Spring. And again, this is one where the state capital doesn't make the list of the four uh, largest cities in the state. Um, <clears throat> let's get into some of the history of Maryland. Um, in 1608, the British basically landed. Uh, Captain John Smith explored the Chesapeake area, and um, the, that's the English laid claim to that particular um, area of, of the United States. Uh, it was originally established as a proprietary colony, in 1632, King Charles I granted a charter to Cecil Calvert, who was the second Lord Baltimore. And then they named it in, in honor of Queen Henrietta Maria, as I said, who was the wife of the king who granted the charter. So, um, And interestingly enough, it was um, envisioned as a refuge for Catholics. Yeah. However... Even though it was um, envisioned as a as a refuge for Catholics, they're one of the first um, settlers who actually enacted a policy of religious tolerance in the United States. They um, called it the uh, the Act of Toleration, in uh, and it was established in 1649. It provi provided religious freedom. For all Christians, yes, uh, Christians, it wasn't extended to Jews or Muslims. But at that point in history, that wasn't a major concern. Um, and I don't just mean that because they didn't care, but because um, Muslims and Jews at that time, there were, very f there were very few traveling into that part of the world, as far as I understand. Um, I could be wrong about that, but um, there were kind of pockets um, in the old world, but they didn't really make that crossing until later. Um, anyway, uh, tobacco. Uh, so then I say tobacco. It, uh, it was a huge cash crop in, in uh, Maryland at the time, but I should talk about that later. 
uh, during the Rev revolution, um, they were right in the midst of that particular area. So they were um, quite key in, in the fight for independence, as we call it. Um, the state's delegates, delegates signed the Declaration of Independence in 1776. There were Maryland troops at uh, the Battle of Baltimore, Battle of Trenton, um, and Maryland then later part, became part of the Continental Congress, which was then gave way to which then gave way to the U.S. Constitution in 1788. Um, <clears throat> now it was a slave state, so um, it started. Um, as a slave state, but then there were slaves basically throughout um, um, the 13 colonies, and it wasn't until much later that those things started going away in the northern areas as they industrialized. Um, but uh, the institution of slavery, because Maryland's uh, was an agrarian economy and tobacco was such a huge cash crop, um, slavery was established and, and grew as the colony grew. So. They, they became um, a significant state, a slaveholding state at that point. Uh, Maryland, then, you know, we have uh, the Civil War that breaks out. And Maryland, interestingly enough, remained with the North, remained with the Union, um, which was interesting because they were uh, considered a border state. So they had very much divided loyalties. Um, and... Uh, there was a lot of political and military tension, of course, where wasn't there in the United States at that point in time. Uh, slavery was abolished with a new state constitution in 1864, uh, and that occurred actually before the ratification of the 13th Amendment, which then abolished uh, slavery in the United States. Um, Post-Civil War, there was a lot of industrialization. Baltimore uh, was a huge center for manufacturing, trade, transportation. Um, and at that point in the state's history, uh, steel production, shipbuilding, and textiles and machinery was kind of what drove that industrialization. Um, of course, we had the civil rights movement uh, that came along later uh, to end racial segregation. Um, there was the landmark case, um, Brown versus the Board of Education, which was decided in uh, 1954 that challenged that segregation in public schools. Um, they're a diverse economic state at this point in time. Um, John Hopkins University and University of Maryland are some of the important institutions educationally in the state. Um, and we'll, we'll get into some more of this in, in, uh, in just a minute, because we'll be talking about that as we go further down. So for the geography of the state, we have the Chesapeake Bay area. Um, Maryland is part of that coastal plain. Uh, and as, as you go west in the state, you run into the Piedmont Plateau and the Appalachian Mountains. Um, the Appalachian Mountains are a, a, a big part of the eastern seaboard of the United States. They're, they run right along the, the eastern portion of the United States. So... Um, Maryland, it's in the Chesapeake Bay. It's the largest estuary in the United States, uh, and it has uh, a lot of coastline there. That So there's a lot of um, economic um, industry that, that is surrounding that particular part of the state. Um, there, uh, the eastern part of the state, as I said, it's part of the coastal plain, so they have beaches, marshes, tidal wetlands. Um, there's a lot of wildlife in the area because of, of where it, uh, it's situated. And then as you go to the western part of the state, you have the Piedmont Plateau that runs into the Appalachian Mountains. Um, and it's, it's that's where the uh, bread basket of the Maryland is. That's where you have the agricultural part of the state. Um, and then you, as you go further west, you get into the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, let's see, largest, uh, the highest point in Maryland is Backbone Mountain, which is 3,360 feet or 1,024 meters. Um, yeah, a lot of waterways in, um, uh, waterways and islands 
in the Chesapeake, well, waterways, rivers, that kind of stuff that flow throughout the state because they're all going to that estuary, as I said before, um, in Chesapeake Bay. And then there's lots of islands and stuff, which then we have um, a lot of recreational areas because of those islands. Um, <clears throat> as far as the climate goes, it's a humid subtropical climate uh, because it's it's right there on the, the Atlantic, and um, it's um, got milder a milder climate because of the Chesapeake Bay. Um, moderately uh, hot summers, moderately cold winters, but as you go out towards the mountains, they, it cool cool it cools down as far as the climate goes, and then it has more precipitation out towards those mountains. Um, <clears throat> Let's see, moving on, industry, biotech and life science, defense and aerospace, information technology, financial services, tourism, manufacturing, education. Those are the major Maryland industries. Um, oh, I have some more to talk about on, I, I skipped some of my notes here. So summers, uh, generally hot and humid uh, from the upper, nine, upper 80s to the low 90s in Fahrenheit, which is 30 to 35 Celsius. Th thunderstorms are common during the summers. In the autumn, 60 to 70, which is 15 to 25 Celsius. Um, then winters, uh, you have milder conditions because it's there on the coast, but it can have quite a bit of snowfall in the northern parts of the state because of the water, which tends to exacerbate some of the storms. Uh, with 40s to 50s in the temperatures for which is 5 to 15 degrees Celsius. And then you have spring, which is 50 to 70, which is 10 to 25 degrees Celsius. Um, they do have uh, hurricanes and what they call nor'easters, which are very are particularly violent storms um, because they're right there on the coastal area. Which, yeah. Um, anyway, now we can move back. Move back to the the yeah here we go so we talked about these ones um the national institute of health and the food and uh, drug administration are in this area so that kind of drives that biotech and life science um there's a significant uh, be the washington dc is situated in maryland um and so a lot of the you know federal government as well. So because of that, we have a lot of defense and aerospace that's in the, um, the, the area. You have the U.S. Naval Academy, Fort Meade, Aberdeen Proving Ground, Andrews Air Force Base. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into the defense and aerospace industry there. Um, with Washington, D.C. being there, there's a lot of information technology that has to, I mean, it drives stuff down. You know, it drives industry, it drives the government. A whole bunch of stuff is centered around IT. So because of the, the presence of the military, because of the government there, there's a lot of development with uh, information technology. Uh, and then again, there's the financial services as well, tourism and hospitality. There's a lot that goes into the, um, um, in, into Maryland as far as tourism dollars. Uh, Baltimore's Inner Harbor, Annapolis, Ocean City, Chesapeake Bay. There's huge things that go on in those that, that drive um, tourism to the state. Uh, manufacturing, again, they started out with the, the shipyards, with the steel, and they're pretty much going on with that stuff because they still got the Navy and whatever else that, that goes through there. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, we have Johns Hopkins and the University of Maryland that are... Uh, big education centers in the United States and in Maryland. Um, tourism, uh, there, there's a lot of historic cities and um, and locations in Maryland. A lot of it doing with uh, having to do with the American Revolution and with the Civil War. Um, <clears throat> let me, again, I'm skipping ahead of my notes here. So just some of the big companies that are in Maryland. We have Lockheed Martin, Marriott International, uh, McCormick and Company. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with McCormick, they do a lot of spices. 
uh, Under Armour, which is uh, athletic apparel. We have the T. Rowe Price Group, which is investment, global investments and, and things like that. We have Northrop Grumman, uh, Sinclair Broadcast Group, uh, one of the largest television broadcasting companies in the United States, Discovery Inc., which is a global media company, um, Constellation, uh, which is uh, an energy company. Um, they focus on electricity, nat natural gas, and renewable energy. And then we have MedStar, um, which operates hospitals, medical centers, and healthcare. Um, I need to keep up on my notes here rather than just going ahead when I think I've gotten to the end of my slide. Um, so, Maryland tourism. Let's go back to Maryland tourism. We talked a little bit about um, <clears throat> excuse me, Baltimore Inner Harbor. Um, it has a lot of waterfront attractions, um, cruises. Uh, there's historic Fort McHenry. Uh, and um, I'm trying to remember. Was it Fort McHenry? I have to check. Uh, if I remember right, Fort McHenry was where the... Um, which... Uh, um, It was what um, inspired uh, Francis Scott Key to write the national anthem. I was right. Uh, so the U.S. Nas national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, was written by um, Francis Scott Key. And um, it was when um, Fort McHenry was being bombarded, uh, which is a significant part of the American Revolutionary War, if I remember right. Um, Anyway, it, the, the, he didn't expect to uh, see the fort still standing the next morning because of the bombardment from the British ships uh, at that point in time, and it inspired him to write the national anthem. Uh, at the time, it was a, a just um, a poem, a, a particularly um, patriotic poem, but it eventually came, uh, became the... Um, the national anthem. So, Ocean City again. Uh, beaches. We have Annapolis, which is the capital, and it has um, colonial architecture. Cobblestone streets, which are much more common back east than they are uh, out towards the west. Um, boat tours, historic district. Um, we have uh, again. There's a lot of stuff that goes on uh, that's related to the ocean that's there. We have Assateague Island. Um, uh, Chesapeake Bay, camping, swimming, bird watching. There's a whole bunch of stuff that goes on there. And then we have uh, Antietam National Battlefield. That's a Civil War site. Um, uh, one of the bloodiest battles in U.S. history. Um, Battlefield Visitor Center. There's all sorts of stuff there. Uh, Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Visitor Center is also lo located there. Harriet Tubman was a, an interesting figure in um, the... Civil War. Uh, she was an escaped slave, um, and she was uh, an amazing woman, and um, she helped uh, um, hundreds of people uh, escape from slavery using the Underground Railroad. Um, she had a. Uh, she was definitely considered an outlaw by the South, and uh, she went back numerous times to the South to help people escape, uh, and um, she was. Uh, very, very brave woman uh, who did uh, as much as she could to help um, end slavery and, and to get people to safety in the North. Um, if you're interested in wineries and lighthouses, that's uh, part of the Maryland tourism. Um, I can't say that either of those really appeal to me. I mean, lighthouses seems a strange thing to draw somebody, but, you know, whatever. Um, on to the part that I like best, Maryland trivia. So the states, uh, Maryland has a state sport. It's the only state in the United States to have an official state sport. And that is jousting. Yeah, jousting tournaments, um, they go back to colonial times that they've had, had these jousting tournaments in, in Maryland. Uh, that was something that I found interesting. Yeah. Um, I mentioned before that uh, the National Anthem was um, written in Maryland by Francis Scott Key to, during the War of 1812. So not the Revolutionary War, the War of 1812. Um, that was, again, again against the British. 
but it was um, after the United States had actually become a country. Um, Fort McHenry, as I mentioned before, um, they have um, <clears throat> oyster shucking. Uh, the World Championship is held annually in in St. Mary's County, Maryland. Uh, and apparently it's a global event. People from all around the world come to Maryland to do oyster shucking. Yeah. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with oyster shucking, it's it's basically you take the oyster and you um, cut it open. Um, I don't know if there's more to it than that, but um, you're basically getting the oyster open. Um, Edgar, Allen's, Al, Edgar Allan Poe's grave is in Maryland. Um in Baltimore, uh, Westminster Hall and bury, Burying Ground. Um, interestingly enough, so I have read uh, all the works of Edgar Allan Poe, loved it. Um, prior to, I don't know, five, ten years ago, I don't exactly remember when I, um, when I got the book. I got a book that was complete works of Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe. Um, I was only familiar with... Um, Pit and the Pendulum, um, Cask of Amontillado, um, Annabelle Lee, and The Raven. Those were the four. I'd heard of The Fall of House of Usher. Oh, uh, Mask of the Red Death. That was the other one that I was familiar with. I'd heard of The Fall of House of Usher, but I didn't. I hadn't read it. Um, Poe is uh, known for his um, uh, kind of dark and... Uh, Gothic stories. I don't know if gothic is right the right word, but um, he was known as 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 being kind of a a horror writer with with things like the Mask of the Red Death and and uh, Annabelle Lee and things like that. Fall of the House of Usher, Pit and the Pendulum. The thing is, is that he he wrote more than just those uh, kind of stories. He also did uh, detective stories. He did um, futuristic stories. There was a bunch of stuff that he did. And, uh, Obviously, some better than others. Um, Murder at the Rue Morgue uh, was an interesting one. I'm trying to remember. The Gold Bug was another one that didn't kind of fit in with uh, um, that kind of image, at least in my mind, of who Edgar Allan Poe was. Great stories, though. Uh, there's a Goatman legend in Maryland. It's uh, a cryptid that supposedly lives in uh, Maryland, half man, half goat. Uh, if you're interested in that sort of stuff, going to Maryland, uh, you want to go to Prince, Prince George's County. Um, and it's part of the Maryland folklore there. The Mystery Stone. Um, in 1971, uh, there's a stone. It's called the Dundock, Dundock Stone. Uh, it was discovered in Dundock, Maryland. And it's got strange symbols all over it. And uh, nobody knows what the purpose of the stone uh, is or what the symbols are. So... Well, yeah, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, go to Maryland. Um, uh, let's see. <clears throat> there we go. Uh, trying to see. I kind of my my um, points here and my my notes are kind of out of order. Let's see if I can find. Oh, here we go. Uh, Maryland has a hun culture. It's short for honey. Uh, and instead of saying, like, how are you doing or whatever, they call people hun, or which is short for honey. Um, and uh, they're actually people who dress for this culture, which apparently is they're outgoing and vibrant and they have beehive hairstyles. They have the cat eye glasses um, and apparently they have hun fest, which is they go to Baltimore and they do this kind of stuff. Uh, the Derby Day Ferret Festival, they have Preakness Stakes, which is a one of the Triple Crown of horse racing events uh, held at the Pimlico Race Course in Baltimore. Um, and they have Preakness Infield, which is they go to the festival and they have music, music food, drinks, and they have the horse races. Um, they have steeplechase races, uh, which are horse racing events that have jumps and obstacles. Uh, Maryland Grand Hunt Cup held in Glendon is one of the oldest, apparently, and most prestigious steeplechase races in the United States. Um, and they have tailgating picnics and, 
if you're not sh uh, aware of what that is, is basically you go to like where you're going to be and uh, you go in a truck and then you lower the bed of the truck and you have, and that's tailgating. You have like barbecues and stuff out in the parking lot. They, they do it a lot for like football events. Um, uh, let's see. Um, if I can find my, my notes here. Um, steeplechase races. Where'd it go? Uh, it is illegal to wrestle a lion, but I'm trying to figure out where I have that note. Um, ah, here we go. Uh, it's prohibited to engage in lion wrestling matches. I don't know where you come up with this stuff. What? Why would you wrestle a lion? I don't know. It just... Yeah. Uh, you cannot frown at the police. Um, this may or may not still be on the books. Um, it was possibly trying to maintain respect for law and, and order and whatnot. Um, but, I mean, seriously, it, how would you enforce this? It, it would be shot down in a second here in the United States. Um, you cannot have a donkey in your bathtub. Uh, it was This one is off the books. Uh, it's no longer um, uh, part of um, the laws in Maryland, but at one point it was illegal to bring a donkey into a bathtub. Were, was there a rash of donkeys in bathtubs that the state was trying to fight and stamp down? Who knows? Uh, and then whale hunting. It's illegal to hunt whales from a moving vehicle. I don't know if this... Um, it's no longer applicable, but I don't know if this was like a moving land-based vehicle or a moving boat. It, uh, as far as I could tell, who knows? Uh, it could be both. If that vehicle is moving in any way, shape, or form, you cannot hunt a whale from it. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, anyway. That one is no longer active on the books of Maryland, so, you know, who knows. Um, that's it for Maryland for now. If you have questions about Maryland, you'd like me to look them up, I'm more than happy to do so. If you've been to Maryland and you found it interesting in any way, shape, or form, or you found it odd, please let me know. Comment, like, subscribe down below, all that other stuff. Turn the bell on so you get notifications, and see ya.